Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Today, I wanted to get on and talk about sexual blueprints and tantra because I've talked about them separately before. Um, I wanted to do a discussion that incorporates both of them and how they can be tied together. So uh, when I'm talking about the blueprints, what I'm referring to is Jaya's um, blueprints of, of, of sexual um, nature um, because there's a, a sexual blueprint so I'm not sure what I'm supposed to call it um, so that uh, what she says in her book your blueprint for pleasure um, talks about the different ways in which we sh um, show our, our um, love how we're intimate, different ways that we connect. Um, and not all of them are necessarily sexual, but most of them are, right? Or that the intention of it is. So she talks about the energetic, the sensual, the sexual, kink, and chameleon. So there's five of them. Um, and so, as you can imagine, the sexual blueprint is um pretty straightforward really like um you um don't need a lot to kind of get revved up uh you're kind of ready to go fairly quickly um it's it's about you know like very much about action um and so um it's it's what we stereotypically think of when we think of male or men cis men right and that's the problem with you know genderizing these things is because then men cis men growing up grow up believing that that's the only way to express their sexual energy but then she talks about the energetic and energetic people can feel that sexual sexual energy build within themselves um, and can have like full body orgasms and whatnot and don't necessarily even need to be physically touched in order to achieve that. The sensual, um, of course, you know, what you would think, right? They need, they need the, um, the foreplay to include um, soft and gentle. They need the environment to be soft and gentle. Um, in order to get excited. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that they don't turn into the sexual blueprint once they're there um, because it's not about just sort of like labeling things. It's about just getting a better understanding and then of course kink brings to mind um, probably very specific things for people but what people don't understand is that kink is so different for across every person that um, kink for one person could just mean a different position, right? Like, kink is um, anything that feels taboo to you. Um, so that can incorporate a lot of things, right? Um, and so we need to broaden definitions. We need to get a better understanding of things. And this is what the, the book sort of helps to do. And then the chameleon... Um, is is sort of the combination of all of those things and in some ways this can be really beneficial because maybe you're matching the energy of your partner in any given moment um, however um, it also could mean that you're not necessarily tuning into your own desires and needs in that moment right so there's sort of there's these um, sort of darker sides to each of the blueprints as well or like the what would be out of balance or what would show up if the person was out of balance right so that's how I kind of tie it to the chakra system and to Tantra um, energy right so that ideally we would be in tune with each other's energy and we'd be feeding off of it and feeding it to you, be feeding it back to you, right? So that um, that you're in tune with each other and that you're um, deeply connected throughout the whole experience. But what the reality is for most people is that 
either A, they both happen to have the same blueprint, B, one person's putting aside their own blueprint in order to please the other one, or C, they're both so much in their own sort of blueprint that they're not really um, fully with the other person. So what I mean is that they're so focused on their own pleasure and what they need in order to achieve that, that they're not really connecting to, you know, maybe the person, the other person who's providing some of that pleasure, right? So those are sort of the drawbacks um, of not being connected energetically to your partner. Um, and not to say that you can't have orgasms without that connection, because clearly we can. However, if you're wanting to sort of take it to the next level, if you're wanting to really elevate your um, your connection with your partner, then learning more about these different blueprints gives you a language to use to open up discussion, right? How can we become more connected? What's your blueprint? My blueprint is this. What does that mean for us, right? Are we mismatched? I don't believe that you can be completely mismatched. It seems like on the surface that it would be easy to just say, oh, well, if an energetic person came in or got into a relationship with a sexual blueprint, that that would be mismatched. But that's not necessarily true. So, you know, you can learn to work with each other. It's really, so it's really about whether you're wanting to really please the other person in the ways that they need to experience pleasure without it being all about you all the time. And then also setting it up so that you receive the pleasure that you're, you know what I mean? So I wouldn't suggest that the sexual blueprint person just, you know, completely, um, you know, push down that part of themselves in order to please the energetic person because they have needs and desires that need to be met, right? So it's incumbent on both of you, once you kind of understand where you're both coming from, to find ways to make it work. I need more touch. I need less touch. How do we figure this out? And that's where the Tantra can come in to play right because it's not just about the physical pleasure it's about the deeper connection on an energetic level that you can achieve which then just takes it to a whole other level right so and ideally i think we would all want to incorporate some aspects of each of these blueprints so if you find yourself if you do go and buy this book which i totally recommend you do or even just go listen to her some of her podcast interviews and whatnot on YouTube because she talks about them, right? And you can kind of get a sense of like, oh yeah, you know, I think I'm I'm very much an energetic, right? That might be your thing. You might might be like it resonates with you and you're like, oh now I get it, right? Now I understand why I enjoyed this kind of experience versus that or whatever. Um, and so that might be really helpful to validate your experience for one because you know again we we kind of all especially my generation we grew up believing that intimacy was you know certain acts done in certain ways by certain people and that anything outside of that was deviant or kink right and so um, and then when you think about, you know, how it's portrayed in media, how it's portrayed in movies and whatnot, you get, you know, you get this, just this one version of what, um, you know, sex is, right? And there's so much more to it. So, or you get sort of the stereotypical versions of those things too, right? Um, and that can be just as bad. Because you might rule out something because you think, oh, that's kink. I'm not into kink, not doing it. No, you're not going to get me to, you know, use whips and chains or whatever, right? And then you start to realize once you grow in your knowledge that, oh, that's not 
all of what kink is. Kink is all kinds of things, right? And same with, you know, the sensual, you know, there's this belief that, oh, it's women that need the sensual. Um, and that's just not true. But if you have a whole generation of men who have been told that they don't need sensual and that they need more of the sexual um, blueprint kind of experiences, and that's what a real man needs, and um, you know, then you know, of course, they're gonna they're gonna probably grow up thinking like, oh yeah, you know, if, if I if I want those things or ask for those things, those will seem unmanly. And then on the flip side of that is not all women want the sensual experience. Not all women want candles and soft lighting and, and you know, soft music. Some women are sexual blueprints. Some women are kink blueprints. You know what I mean? Like, so like we need to remove gender from the conversation and just recognize it as human beings. This is a really great way of being able to have conversation around all the different ways that people get turned on, that people experience sexual and emotional satisfaction, right? So however it is, and, and, and we need to be careful to not also fall into the trap that if someone is a sexual uh, blueprint that they're not capable of that emotional connection and and vice versa that the sensual person is is so much more capable of you know emotionally attuning to their partner because that's not necessarily true right so we need to just debunk a lot of myths and I feel like the her book really did a lot of that and it kind of introduced Tantra in sort of a backdoor kind of way like to talk about these different energies that exist within us and not just the energetic blueprint because all of this is energetically driven right it just manifests in different ways for different people so if you're utilizing Tantra that doesn't only mean that you can practice energetic blueprint type experiences or the sensual blueprint type experiences right this can um, just kind of work in any of the blueprints because it's the energy that you bring to the experience right and that connecting connecting of energy and that's what makes it more tantric and accessible. So hopefully um, this kind of helps to maybe pique your interest. Maybe it makes you wonder what else um, is out there, right? Like, um, because there's tons of books on different techniques. And even Jaya has um, other books um, that are more about, you know, techniques and things to to do with each other physically um, and then you know like there's there's dr. Emily Morse who I've mentioned before who has you know her book smart sex who kind of takes it in a different direction um, but somewhat similar in that she's talking about how and I've talked about this before too is that how connected our sexual health is to our mental and physical health right so I feel like Jaya's book Blueprint for Pleasures sort of brings oops, sorry sort of brings that um, more spiritual or energetic kind of language to it but even still like I don't know that that was her intention I just I think that's her naturally and maybe that's what I'm reading into it so I'd love to hear what your thoughts are if you um, if you haven't seen any of her videos and you haven't heard her speak about her her experience as a, a sexual health practitioner or her own uh, personal experiences in it and you read the book then I'd love for you to connect with me and let me know like were you kind of picking up on that vibe or is that just me kind of putting it in there um, and is it and is it more based on the fact that I've heard her speak about this subject um, and maybe it's kind of biased because of that as well. So if you've never heard her, but you're inspired to go buy the book because of what I've said here today, then I'd love to hear your thoughts on this because, um, and I would, I maybe I would suggest like hold off on 
listening to some of her talks on YouTube because then maybe we could have that discussion be interesting to see if maybe I'm bringing my bias into it and reading more into it than there actually was but I really felt like it it connected to the to the intention of Tantra which is you know <clears throat> to be in attunement with your partner and Tantra isn't just for partner experiences. You can have Tantra experiences on your own. Um, and in the book where she's talking about uh, the different blueprints, she's suggesting different ways to ex um, just do some exploration and self-discovery to figure out um, what your blueprint is, right? So as you're going through the book, you're maybe doing some things on your own or with a partner to figure out like do I like this does this feel good would I want my partner to do this or do I just want to do this for myself like it's so I feel like in that way it's very tantric so anywho I just thought I'd share that with you I've talked about both of those authors before um, so you can you know listen to some other my some of my other videos I usually throw them on YouTube. Um, I have some TikTok stuff about, um, you know, uh, chakra energy and tantra and stuff like that. So feel free to go over there and check those out as well. Um, and if you are watching this on YouTube, I mean, everyone says it, but like, like and subscribe if you could, because that would be really helpful. Um, share it with friends if you think it would be helpful for them to know this kind of stuff. And, uh, and of course, comment if you have anything that you'd like to ask or um, maybe have some of your own experiences you can share. So I'd love to hear from you. Thanks and have a great rest of your day. Namaste.